Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Okay, so I am so excited for today's video because I have been working on this video for literally like months. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how long I've been working on this project and this is actually just the first part of three different projects that you're going to be seeing throughout the month of October. So I'm really, really excited to share all of those with you. So let's see. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to be doing today in this video is I'm going to be creating a piece using the Aquafine water watercolor inks by Dayla Rowney. And what it is, is Dayla Rowney sent me a bunch of inks to try out for Inktober. And I actually worked with them to create some art and videos for their social media. But I also wanted to share it on my social media because I worked really, really hard on these pieces. And I'm really, really proud and happy with how they came out. And I wanted to share that with you guys. So this is kind of the first piece that I worked on using the Aquafine watercolor inks. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the piece, a little bit about the inks. And I'm also going to be addressing that I have this thing called aphantasia and how that affects me as an artist. So before I jump into that topic, let's talk a little bit about the watercolor inks just because I want to let you guys know what I'm using. So... The watercolor inks are, they're watercolor inks, <laughs> but they're really cool. I've never actually used watercolor inks before. Um, I was excited to try these and I really, really like them. They re-wet really well, which is really nice. Uh, you can just like leave them in the palette and they dry overnight and they're pigment based, which is really cool because it means they granulate and they're not dye based. So they're just, it, they're going to last longer. They're more light fast. Um, so that's really awesome because a lot of inks are dye based. They're not pigment based. And I always prefer pigment based supplies over dye based supplies if possible, because a lot of times dye based supplies won't mix in the way that you're expecting pigments. And if you guys don't know this, then you should look it up. You can actually look up all the different pigments that are used to create artist paints. Usually on the back of any kind of like watercolor paint, you should actually be able to see the mixture of pigments that they use. You can even look those up and you can see how other pigments are going to mix with other pigments. So you can have a more comprehensive idea of what your colors are going to mix like, and it can help you keep your colors vibrant and help you avoid getting dull colors. So especially for watercolor, I do feel like pigment-based watercolor is significantly more beneficial than dye-based watercolor personally and just simply the fact that it's more light fast watercolor as a general rule is more fugitive that means that when light hits it the uv rays it destroy it and it will fade and pigment-based watercolors are much more light fast so they last a lot longer and they're not going to fade in the sun and they're just better for the longevity of your piece. So whatever kind of watercolors or paints you're using, if you really want your piece to last, try to use pigment-based ones, not dye-based ones. I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the inks that I wanted to mention. They're really, they're, oh yeah, you can use them like straight from the dropper, which is nice. It's kind of like using tube paint that's already diluted for you. So it's hard to put on too much. And I really enjoyed that. But they're diluted, but they're already super pigmented. So it's kind of like a nice change from using pan watercolors or even tube watercolors. So I don't know, but let's talk about the actual piece itself because it is going to relate to what I talked to you a little bit, talk to you about a little bit later. So this piece is called Electric Pool and I have been working a lot on my personal style. Uh, I kind of have started to see that I have two different types of artwork that I create. So I create more final, big finish pieces. That's something like this. And those tend to lean a little bit more realistic and then have elements of like fantasy and certain abstract elements. And I play a lot with like texture and things like that. And then I have my more cartoony style, which you guys see pretty frequently. That's kind of a little bit more of what I'm doing in Inktober. A lot of times my little sketches are like that. So this is definitely more of one of my bigger pieces. As you can tell, I did this on the Canson Heritage paper because I was sent a bunch of Daler and Rowney supplies to try out and to use for these videos for them. Um, and this video specifically, like I didn't have to upload this to my channel or anything like that. I'm just really proud of this artwork and I wanted to share it with you guys and all of the artwork that I'm working on. I'm spending a long time on, so I really, I want to show you guys what I'm doing. It's very, very exciting, but I genuinely liked everything. So I know, you know, 
<laughs> it was very exciting for me. So for this piece, I wanted to create something that had a lot of elements of kind of, I, I guess fantasy is probably the best way to say it. And I, it's called Electric Pool. And the reason it's called Electric Pool is because what I'm working on right now, the shirt is actually a texture of the pool at my old apartment complex that I had taken. I think I was on my Instagram or in my phone. A lot of times I'll look through my phone, look at old photos to see kind of like if I have anything good that I can incorporate. And basically what I'll do is I will create a photo mock-up of what I want to create and play around with all the different elements in there. And then I will use that photo mock-up to kind of like work from, work my art from. So it's called Electric Pool. I wanted to create kind of a dreamlike semi. It's inspired somewhat by Vaporwave, at least in terms of the colors. I have been really, really loving Vaporwave artwork for quite a few years now. If you don't know what Vaporwave is, it's a stylistic, <laughs> it's like, a, it's basically a style and it's really, really interesting. Um, it uses a lot of bright colors, aesthetic. It, so it started out as like in like electronic music and like internet memes and stuff like that. But if you look up Vaporwave and you look at the images, it's a lot of like pinks, purples, oranges, there's some teals. There's a lot of kind of like semi-futuristic stuff but it's also like it's like futuristic and retro at the same time um, and it's something that I find myself really interested and intrigued by especially the color forms and the idea of glitching which they use a lot so when I was working on this some of the things that I wanted to incorporate from that inspiration was the colors and kind of offsetting some of the line art a little bit so it was floating so as you saw I did the sketch worked on the background just kind of creating some of these gradient clouds and then worked on creating this water pool flat texture for the sweatshirt and oh my goodness this texture uh water is hard to paint oh my goodness water is hard to paint but for this i used the aquafine inks but then on top of them i used the System 3 acrylic inks by Daylor Rowney, which I'm actually going to be doing. That's the next project that's coming out is with the System 3 acrylic ink. So keep an eye out for that one. And the System 3 ones are opaque. So I was able to mix those in with the watercolors and create almost a gouache like texture with the white. And so I could build up this translucency and then add the opaque white on top and then kind of mix that in and I really enjoy juxtaposition in my artwork. So for me, having these layers of transparency and translucency where you can see the light kind of coming through, but then you also have these layers of things that are more opaque on top. To me, that's really interesting and adds another level of visual texture to the piece. So it's something that I try to do a lot. Working on the skin. Oh my gosh, I really wanted to focus on the bright colors, all the bright colors and bring out the colors. And skin is my favorite thing to paint by far. I love looking at all the different colors that you can find in skin tones and then really exaggerating those. So this was, oh, I loved painting the skin on this. It was just my favorite part. I really enjoyed it. So I think, I think that's almost everything about the art. And now that we're like over halfway through the video, <laughs> I want to talk to you about aphantasia. So aphantasia, uh, you may know or you may have heard about because there was a big video that went viral on YouTube a little while back and I will link the video down in the description box. And it was an animated video and it basically was where a lot of us <laughs> first heard about something called aphantasia. And aphantasia is the suggested name for a condition where one does not possess a functioning mind's eye and cannot voluntarily visualize imagery. So aphantasia is really interesting in terms of it's a very new phenomenon. It was suggested in 1880, but it's remained largely unstudied. And I think that's partially just due to the fact that so much of it is semi-subjective and it's really hard to identify if you have it. It, you can't necessarily see like what someone is seeing in their brain, but I'd be interested to see if there's any sort of like difference when you scan the brain, when people are trying to visualize or not. But it has been renewed in interest after a study was published in 2015 by Professor Adam Zeman of the University of Exeter. And he's also the one that coined the term aphantasia. So there's not a lot of research right now, but they're doing more research. So Basically, um, he used a vividness of visual imagery questionnaire to evaluate the quality of the mental image. 
And this is what the video went over. And basically it just invites somebody to visualize a series of images. So visualize a relative, a son, an apple, whatever you want. And then you want to rank how vivid the image is. So perfectly clear and live, like you, it's almost as if it's real or no image at all. Like you only know that you're thinking of the object. And you do that for a few different objects. And if you score a total of 30 or less across 16 questions, it's categorized as aphantasia. So that's what his definition of aphantasia was based on the paper that he wrote. And there's another study that's posited the uh, frontal engagement, um, that, that, that people that have aphantasia could have a deficit with certain feedback connection, connections in their visual cortex. So it could be that as well. And just so you know, I will link all my sources down below as well if you guys want to see where I'm finding all this information from, mostly Wikipedia. But yeah, so that's kind of a brief overview of what aphantasia is. So I heard about aphantasia through the video, as I'm sure many of you did if you've heard about it or you're hearing about it now through this video. But if you want to kind of try that test, close your eyes and imagine, say, an apple. That's the example I've seen used a lot. And try to imagine how clear and vivid that is. Like, can you reach out and get it? Do you know, like, can you turn the apple? Is the apple green? Is it red? Is it speckled? Does it have a bite taken out of it? You know, can you turn it in 360 degrees? All of that kind of stuff. Um, and then kind of rank. And uh, it said the original guy used one through five. I've heard one through 10, zero through 10. But basically, when I try to imagine something, I get nothing. Um, it's just black. And I always thought that that was normal. I thought that that was, I thought the idea of picturing something in your head was a metaphor. I didn't realize that people could actually picture things in their head. I do have dreams or I had dreams. I haven't had dreams in years now, but I used to have dreams frequently uh, or semi-frequently. I'm okay with not having dreams because my dreams were always closer to nightmares than, than they were to actual dreams. I used to have very big issues with night terrors, which is unfortunate. So I sort of know what visualizing images in your mind is like, but when it comes to actually trying to visualize something that I want to draw, it's really difficult because I can't do it. And it's been very weird learning this. I used to not have a problem with this because I didn't know it existed, but learning that certain people can visualize things in their head and picture things, that, first of all, it blows my mind. But second of all, it's, it's one of those things, it's, it's almost frustrating. Like I'm sitting there and I'm drawing and I'm trying to figure out how maybe like a hand or an arm would turn in three dimensions. And I can't because I can't picture it in my head. And I get mad. I'm like, oh, this must be like, this must, it, this explains so much. This is why I just like can't understand things or can't conceptualize things. And it's, it's like almost easier to like blame it. If that makes sense, whenever I'm feeling frustrated about sketching or trying to draw from my imagination, I'm like, oh, well, you have aphantasia, so like, what do you even expect? And that's like a really negative attitude to have. But I think that when you're an artist and you find out that everyone else can picture things in their head, your initial, and you can't, your initial thought is like, are you kidding me? Like, the <laughs> what? Um, so I've been really struggling to kind of come to terms with it. I've been looking at a lot of resources online and some forums and things like that. And one thing that I saw somebody describe on the last forum that I was at was um, they said that they don't visualize, but they conceptualize. And I fully agree with that because people have been asking me, how do I make art? And like, how am I creative when I have aphantasia if I can't picture things in my mind? And I've always been describing that by saying that my mind is very literary. So I love reading. I love books. But whenever I've read books, I don't see the characters in my head. I don't picture the characters. When people were talking about how Hermione didn't look how they pictured her in the books, I was like, OK, I don't, she has brown hair. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else you want. Um, so that was really, really interesting because I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? But my mind is very literary. So I kind of conceptualize things in terms of words and ideas versus images. I know what an apple looks like. So I can think in my head, I want to draw an apple and I can draw a, and I can think I want to draw a red apple and I want to draw it from like a three quarter view. I want a bite taken out of it. And because it's red, I want the background to be lime green because it will make the focus 
more it'll make it look more red um you know i can think about that kind of thing i can think about what i want an image to look like compositionally color wise and i can know in my head i can conceptualize that certain things are going to look better certain things are going to change the way that it looks that kind of stuff but i can't picture it and i think that's also one of the reasons that my artistic process is the way that it is like i mentioned before i'm a big fan of making digital mock-ups of my artwork and one of the reasons i like to do that is because i can move around all these different elements and i can figure out what's most aesthetically pleasing to me i can't see it in my head so i have to get it out on paper and i actually think that's one of the biggest reasons that i became an artist if you can't see pictures in your head and you have an imagination you have all these ideas but you can't even picture them what are you gonna do you're going to put them on paper so that's kind of what I did I started putting my stuff down on paper and one of the things that I've noticed watching a lot of other YouTube artists videos and things like that is a lot of artists are very good at just going in and they start sketching and they just use a few lines to define like a limb or the head or whatever and I've always admired people that can do that because when I sketch, I have to use so many construction lines, basic shapes. I basically start with like five sketches and I layer them, layer them, layer them, layer them half the time. If you guys have seen me sketch. I erase constantly. I am changing things. I move the positions of everything around a lot. And I know that a lot of other artists do that, but for me, a lot of times I don't even know what I want it to look like in terms of pose before I start because I can't just like visualize an image in my head. So a lot of times I have to move things around on the paper until they look right because I don't even know like in my head how the arm would move or where it would go. So it's all very logical. I'm drawing the shoulders and I'll be like, okay, so the collarbones are gonna connect to this and the shoulder muscles are going to connect to this and I know that this is too high or this is too low. So those are kind of the ways that I've been working on or that I guess that I have compensated my whole life without even realizing it um, in terms of my art and learning anatomy and things like that. So yeah, aphantasia is weird and frustrating <laughs> to find out that you have as an artist. It's It's been surprisingly hard for me mentally. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it was because there was this whole video and she kind of ended the video with that she's trying to learn how to visualize. Like she can, she's closing her eyes and focusing on, you know, the things that she can see, like kind of the light, light spots, you know, that you get if you stare at something and you close your eyes. I get that too. She gets that too. Um, and I don't know how I feel about it. Part of me is like, yes, practice visualization. Like I am sometimes when I'm trying to sleep or whatever, I'll try to practice visualization. But at the end of the day, it just bums me out because I can't do it. Like, and then it's like, am I trying to force myself to do something that I don't need to do? Just because everyone else visualizes something in this way doesn't mean that my way of conceptualizing it is any less valid. It's worked for me my entire life. I'm 29 years old. I'm going to be 30 in July. And I've spent my entire childhood, teenage years, and adult life not being able to visualize things in my head. I've always worked off conceptualizing, and I think that's one of the things that can make me so creative because I have to take things out of my head and I have to try all these different ideas on the page, and I can't just go with the first thing that pops into my head because it doesn't. <laughs> so I'm trying to change my mindset and instead see aphantasia as something that can be positive to me. I managed to change my mindset about my ADHD and I see that as something that's positive for me because I'm able to go into a hyper-focus mode and that's like my superpower. So I'm trying to see aphantasia as something that's a little bit more positive and try to figure out the benefits that I get from aphantasia. <laughs> So that's kind of, I don't know, that's what I wanted to talk about with Aphantasia. I was originally going to talk about for like the whole video, but I had a lot more to say on the watercolor inks than I expected. So that's fine. Um, we're making this a longer video. It'll be good. Uh, watercolor inks are fun. I definitely recommend trying them out if you are interested. I really, I did, I, I genuinely enjoyed them. And I really hope that you guys like this piece. I worked extremely hard on it. I'm very proud of it. And I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing something a little bit different, more polished and more finished from me. This is a piece that did take quite a few weeks to complete. So let me know if you have any questions about working on a larger piece over an extended period of time. If you have any questions about the watercolor inks, let me know down in the description box because I have a, down in the description box, down in the comment box, because I do have a bunch of information on them. And Aphantasia, do you have it? 
Do you know someone that has it? Do you believe it exists? Or do you just think that we all see things differently and are missing our communication strategies? I do think it exists just based on the people that I've talked to and the different descriptions they've given me about what they see in their head. Especially my mother who says like it's crazy real to her. She like thinks that she can reach out and get it. And I'm like, you what? You what, mate? You what? (laughs) <laughs> but yeah so do you have aphantasia and if you do how do you feel about it it does it upset you uh do you know how to deal with it did you just find out that you have aphantasia if so I am so sorry I'm just kidding it's a superpower you got this I got this I love you guys so much that's the end of this video I hope that you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you like it subscribe if you would like to see more from me I upload new videos every Tuesday and every weekend and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.